Hey everybody, Nick Espinosa, your chief security fanatic here. Don't forget to subscribe. And today we're talking about underground nuclear reactors because they're coming. And if you didn't know, very little nuclear power is currently positioned underneath the earth we walk on, but that's soon to change. Now, this is a beyond serious conversation given how critical nuclear energy is and also given the disasters it could potentially cause. Nobody wants another Chernobyl or Fukushima or Three Mile Island, et cetera, et cetera. So let's talk about this new technology, how it works, its claimed benefits, contrarian views by experts, and get to the bottom of this good and bad. Now, we're going to start with a write-up by Shannon Cuthrell in IEEE Spectrum that had a pretty good concise write-up on that and then move beyond some of the critical points that she mentions. Because if you didn't know, by dropping a nuclear reactor 1.6 kilometers, roughly one mile underground, a new company, Deep Fission, aims to use the weight of a basically a billion tons of rock and water as a natural containment system comparable to like the concrete domes and cooling towers that we see on above ground nuclear reactors. Now the concept is that with the fission reaction occurring far below the surface, steam can safely circulate in a closed loop and therefore generate power. Deep Fission, for uh, the record, is a California-based startup. They announced in October that prospective customers had signed non-binding letters of intent for 12.5 gigawatts of power involving data center developers. And that's really the crux of it here. We're trying to power data centers, and the data centers are stressing the electrical grid, and so we're looking for innovative solutions. And so these letters of intent, I mean, we're talking about industrial parks and other mostly undisclosed strategic partners with initial sites under consideration in Kansas, Texas, and the state of Utah as well. Individual agreements range from one gigawatt to two gigawatts, including a previously announced two gigawatt deal with Endeavor's Edge Division. This is basically a company building high efficiency data centers that are not relying on water to cool the servers and water consumption uh, in data centers is also <clears throat> another big thing I've talked about here in segments before. So let's talk about reactor design because the same oil and gas drilling techniques that reliably reach kilometer deep wells can be adapted to host nuclear reactors while using steam to transfer heat to the surface for power generation following basically ge uh, geothermal methods as well. So locating the reactors under a deep water column suggests them to uh, su subjects them to roughly 160 atmospheres of pressure. That's the same conditions maintained inside a conventional nuclear reactor. In other words, we're just changing one material for another by using the pressure and gravity of earth and water over the nuclear reactor. This forms a natural seal to keep any radioactive coolant or steam contained at depth, preventing leaks from reaching the surface. This is according to Deep Fission. So let's talk about the concerns here. And I want to start with Deep Fission themselves. Their founder, Liz Muller, doesn't seem to think there really is going to be a problem here. So <clears throat> she remembers that one day a customer raised a hypothetical scenario. If somebody accidentally put fresh uranium fuel underground instead of waste, could it start a chain reaction due to the pressure? This basically is what started deep fission. And according to Muller, and I quote, the answer is no. A single fuel assembly a mile underground will not go critical. But as we were doing those calculations, we recognized that you actually have the conditions you want for a nuclear reactor when you're in a borehole a mile underground. So she continued referring to the uh, uh, upper groundwater zone where the water saturates rock and soil. And I quote, the oil and gas industry has shown us how to protect the water table. They have really nasty stuff coming out of their borehole. All that's coming out of our borehole is clean water. So all that radioactivity stays at the bottom and it's just clean hot water coming up as it would with geothermal, end quote. In other words, what she's saying is the radioactivity is going to stay a mile underground and the only thing that's going to come out of that borehole is clean hot water, sim similar to just the basics of geothermal dynamics. So underground siting removes many of the potential dangers as well for surface reactors, such as aircraft impacts. Uh, we've seen that before, vehicle collision, tornadoes, hurricanes, floodings. Right now, the, uh, the Russians over the past couple of years in their invasion of Ukraine have been bombing around Chernobyl, which is absolutely insane to me, given that uh, part of Chernobyl is a giant sarcophagus, basically containing what is the worst nuclear disaster in history. So 
Yeah, underground sounds pretty good there. So Mueller also argues that even uh, a worst case scenario uh, could cause, let's say, economic losses to the reactor or borehole, but wouldn't impact humans or the environment. If an earthquake, for example, ever disrupted the site, quote, you seal it off at the bottom of the borehole, you plug up the borehole, and you have your waste in safe disposal, end quote. In other words, the borehole itself where the reactor is simply just becomes the waste field where the reactor is. In other words, you don't have to do anything but plug it. So by virtue of this, and thank you uh, to IEEE Spectrum again, Shannon Cuthrell for that, I did my homework outside of Deep Fission's claims because, of course, they're going to claim all is good here. And in reading uh, Mueller's uh, basically words, I'm thinking, yeah, I think this is a very rosy picture of this. And so to be very clear here, as I was doing my homework, nobody knows yet if Deep Fission's mild deep reactors are truly safer than modern above ground plants. The concept has some genuine safety advantages, but it also has some real under-discussed uncertainties, especially around groundwater, which is my big concern, monitoring, but access uh, accident management as well. So here's why the proponents are saying it would be safer. And this coincides with a lot of what Mueller said. At a roughly one mile depth, the reactor is surrounded by dense rock. Again, I mentioned it's around, under, around 160 atmospheres of water pressure as well. So in principle, that pressure column helps keep radioactive coolant from flashing to steam and venting towards the surface in an accident. But this relies on the borehole and the nuclear reactor casing. And, and, and it's the casing uh, also that is, that is that big issue. So the borehole and the casing, because if the borehole and casing remain intact and the host rock behaves as modeled, again, ifs, the pathways for a large fast release are then limited. But that's ifs. There's variables there. Also, each deep fission unit is roughly uh, 15 megawatts. It's tiny compared to a 1,000 megawatt conventional reactor. So the radioactive inventory and decay heat per unit is smaller. So in a severe accident theory, less inventory and power density can make some scenarios easier to manage, at least per reactor. So I dove into Mueller's claims that the water table will be safe thanks to the processes proven by oil and gas. And so the claim is basically... Even a serious leak at depth would move so slowly and be so attenuated that drinking water aquifers would remain safe. But let's go through contrarian uh, opinions of experts. Now, deep fission's concept is closely related to deep borehole disposal for spent fuel. That basically has been studied for decades. And the verdict is basically from experts, uh, cautious experts, is simply this. It's promising, but it's not proven or clearly superior to traditional mine repositories. Now, a detailed critique in the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists argues that, and I quote, the safety of uh, the safety case for shallow to moderate deep boreholes, one to two kilometers, is full of holes. They argue here, end quote, that basically difficulties in drilling, large diameter deep wells, uh, wells, thin canister walls, limited availability to monitor and retrieve waste, and safety challenges if canisters get stuck or damaged is very deeply concerning here. Reviews by the Nuclear Waste Technical Review Board, NRC, and European waste agencies concluded that deep borehole disposal would require decades of R&D and not obviously provide better safety margins than a well-sited uh, mined repository. In other words, what we are talking about here is essentially deep fission is taking the concept of the disposal industry of boring deep holes to basically dispose of nuclear waste. And basically, this is not a move fast and break things type of industry, given the potential for literal disaster and literal death. So another company, Deep Isolation, they're an organization that works in nuclear disposable solutions, also weighed in on this via a Q&A with their own lead hydrogeologist, Stefan Finstrel. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. He works, for the record, on similar borehole concepts like deep fission. And he said in a nutshell that groundwater is the main way that radionuclides uh, reach people if containment fa fails. Meaning, uh, look at what happened in Chernobyl. The water table was poisoned, uh, you know, as was the topsoil, all of that. On top of it, he mentioned that hard rocks can be very tight, but the access hole and disturbed rock around it are the weakest part of the barrier system. So even if you seal the borehole, it's hard to prove that the seals stay intact over very long periods of time. 
there's always going to be irreducible uncertainties about long-term seal performance, according to Stefan as well. So think about it this way. This is basically what he's saying in the Q&A that you can go read. The geology may be excellent, but the engineered borehole slash seal system is where things can go wrong. And that's precisely what deep fission is relying on, both for operation and for their plug and walk away accident scenarios. Remember that borehole encasing are the two big issues here that that the experts seem to have. And by virtue of that, you know, if the rock itself, you know, a mile underneath is great, the surface and the borehole is loosening that rock. It's potential for issue here. And so that basically increases an accident scenario potential potentiality here. Right. And for the record. Deep Fission's own early NRC filings acknowledge that the deep borehole complicates monitoring, visual inspection, and remote operation under current rules, and that extra regulatory guidance would be needed. And I think the, the, the point of under current rules means maybe Deep Fission is looking to change those rules, given that this is a not quite novel, but fairly novel concept in uh, the creation or placement of nuclear reactors. So... Is it safer than above ground reactors? And right now, I think the honest answer is we don't know, but we can talk about potential risk trade offs here. So, where is it likely to be safer? Obviously, external events and attacks, a large, fast airborne release. If the borehole and rock behave as designed, the combination of pressure, depth, and geology should basically strongly limit a Chernobyl, a Fukushima, where you basically had a massive plume of radioactive uh, substance released into the air, obviously poisoning the area. Now, where it might be less safe or more uncertain is the groundwater and the water table. Under normal operations, risk to aquifers should be essentially zero if the casings and the seals work. And that's an if. But if you postulate a severe casing failure plus poor seals, <clears throat> groundwater is exactly the pathways that experts are worried about in contaminating water, basically, that would go and flow into our taps, into water and wastewater, into, you know, what our cattle drinks, our humans drink, our pets drink, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, is the issue. <clears throat> Deep borehole waste studies highlight thin margins and uncertainties around borehole sealing and long-term behavior, as uh, basically uh, we just discussed. That's a different risk profile than a surface plant, where the main concern is usually airborne uh, and nearby surface water, not deep aquifers. So the other issue that we have is monitoring, inspection, and repair. A surface plant has humans, cameras, sensors right next to the reactor building. You can walk around it. You can look at piping. You can sample leaks. You can intervene very quickly. Deep Fission's concept must prove that remote sensors plus episodic retrieval of those modules are at least as effective in detecting and mitigating problems, uh, both in real time and long term. Early NRC documents explicitly flag this as a challenge. On top of it, we have waste and decommissioning potential uh, risks as well. Deep Fission suggests that in the worst case, as I mentioned before, Muller just said you can basically plug the borehole. You've essentially got a disposal site at that point. But critics note that they do not magically solve the waste problem and can actually complicate it by distributing smaller waste inventories to many sites. In other words, instead of one site that is basically, let's say, uh, above ground nuclear reactor that is much higher in power, uh, going through and servicing a much larger geographical area, you could potentially have a zillion of these little sites powering smaller regions. But if they start failing, now we've got nuclear waste and nuclear issues in multiple places as opposed to one centered centered place. On top of it, we're talking about new untested failure modes, right? We simply lack the decades of operating experience we have with conventional plants. And so by virtue of that, I think there's good and bad. But the point is, is that we have severe energy needs because of the rise of data centers, growth and population, all of that. Those are currently being stressed. And so we are continuously going to be looking at new and novel ways to continuously create new sources for electricity, for power, for energy generation. And so deep vision may be onto something here, but the science isn't proved yet. Disturbing basically the rock uh, by virtue of making a borehole is of deep concern. And obviously their designs have to go through rigorous testing because if they've got weak or thin casing and they fail under all of that pressure, well, now we have a nuclear accident underground that could potentially impact uh, aquifers, which could impact the water table. So this, I think, is a big challenge. 
I, I don't think there's really a scenario here that I think is perfect. Uh, any scenario you have with energy generation is going to have risks, whether it's water, coal, solar, nuclear, <laughs> take your pick. But we have to look at this in the long term. And so if we're going to move fast and break things here, I think that's the last thing we should be doing. Deep Vision has an interesting concept and we'll see if it proves out. But there you go. We're going to start boring holes at some point and putting nuclear reactors underground. And now you've got all the information. And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP. And please feel free to subscribe to me at YouTube as well. And as always, stay safe, stay online, and please, please, please attempt to stay private, informed, and secure. Take care.